Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today I'm gonna go over how to use the new Lexus Advanced Touch steering wheel that's coming out on a lot of the newer models like RX, like NX. And I promise you, I'll make it seem easy because a lot of people, if you've test driven one of these cars before that has the heads up display with this system, it might have seemed overwhelming, especially on like a test driver, maybe the first few days of ownership. But I promise once you get used to it, it's such a cool system that when customized properly, there's so much benefit to it. So before I get into it, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. And if you are a Lexus owner, let me know in the comments if there's anything else like this that I should go over in great detail so that you can know how to use your Lexus a little bit better. So right now, it's mostly just the new RX and the new NX that have the new advanced touch steering wheel and it's only when they're equipped with a heads up display. So some of the luxury models and some of the you know, other models that's maybe not F Sport, et cetera, won't have this. It would just have like the normal steering wheel setup with no heads up display, but we know all the models are gonna be going this direction. So it's really good to become a pro at it and know the potential. So getting right into things here. Okay, so with the advanced touch steering wheel, there are some tips and tricks to not only get the most out of it, but also sort of just be able to customize it and that sort of thing. So we'll start on the left. So on the left side, you'll see once you put your thumb on any of the surface area on the steering wheel, it'll light up on the heads up display. Now, if you sort of keep your thumb to the left or to the right, it'll show you from factory on the left, the next or seek buttons for music the bottom will give you the voice command and i think if you hold that when you have apple carplay or android auto it'll even do the voice assistant for that and then the top is just to get to your to your phone so if someone's calling you you can hit that you can hit that to make a call etc to the right we have a fixed button so these are volume up and volume down which same thing when you put your thumb over it it'll still show you and then when you press it it'll actually press uh, and actually it does a little cool animation it'll just kind of like bounce there and same with these buttons here at the bottom of that, we have the different pages. So you could sort of press that to go from page one, what I call it, to page two. And on page two, we still have left and right for previous and seek from factory. We have top for mode. Uh, so that's how you can switch from, you know, Sirius XM to FM to AM to whatever you want to do. And then the, the bottom one would be to turn on and off audio. So you can actually see a little bit of color there. You can actually see green for on and then that'll go away for off. Now you can hold that little page button, I don't know what, what else to call it, to delete messages. So like right now the car is off, it's telling me all these different messages. I can clear that screen by holding this, even though those aren't on the heads up display. So we'll show how to customize this in a few minutes, but over to the right side. So on the right side, we have some other fixed buttons. We have the adaptive cruise control. So that's a super important one to be able to activate your cruise control and don't forget this car along with most of the new Lexus models, you can do that even at like city speeds. And lane tracing assist, which is another, another feature you should just kind of always have on. I really like that one as well. Then from the factory, we have the following distance setting uh, and it's not car lengths like a lot of people think. So four isn't four car lengths, three isn't three, two isn't two. All I could say is even two is way more than two car lengths. So four is a very far distance. And then we have modes. You can turn it so that instead of adaptive cruise control, it's just regular cruise control. So Lexus has made it really easy. If, if you wanted to use old cruise control, you can still just do that, which is cool. Then if we go to the other page, we can move and adjust this display. So we can adjust the heads up, up and down, which is great because if you open someone's car that's a lot taller than you, it's not gonna be lined up properly, but also we can change what we see on the other screen. So what I mean by that is we'll have audio, we'll have navigation, uh, boost gauge. So the boost gauge will show up, again, mostly on the main, the main gauge cluster, uh, but some of it's up on the heads up as well. A G-force meter, gear position, a blank one, or fuel consumption, Average speed, elapsed time, those are pretty cool metrics to look at. The eco indicator, which just gives you a little graph and then back to 
you know, the driving support, which is like the cruise control and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool to be able to switch them. But we're gonna show you how to customize them and make them even better. Okay, so to customize the steering wheel, what we're gonna do is click the little gear sign in the bottom left corner. We're gonna scroll to vehicle customize, which has some cool settings in here. And we're gonna scroll down to steering switch. I don't know why they called it that here, but that's what we're gonna go with. Now, super important message for all Canadians. If you hit options, you can turn on winter gloves mode. So if you're gonna have winter gloves on in your car and you wanna use the advanced touch features, turn that on because it makes it more sensitive. Super important. So let's start with the left side and I'll show you how to customize and my favorite setup for this. So here's the factory layout. It's actually laid out under audio. There's also a climate layout, which gives you things like temperature up and down. You can change the mode of your HVAC system. So if it's blowing on your legs, your face, defrost, etc. Temperature up, down, so you have the modes. And then to the right, you just have the circulation. So if it's coming in the car or out of the car. Or you have custom. So custom is pretty cool. So under custom, now I can actually touch the buttons here and decide what. So I'm gonna change the audio left and right because the other page has that. And for this one, I actually might do, there's some HVAC stuff here. A lot of times I do, let's say I wanna control the fan. So now I can do fan, and now left is down for fan speed, right is up for fan speed. And if I wanted to change the temperature ones, maybe we wanna do it so, I don't know, maybe, maybe we can just hit auto. So now we can have fan down, fan up, or auto for climate control, because I, I use that button sometimes. And now we just need one more, maybe we'll just put it as, as, actually that's audio mode. Maybe we'll just do it as air outlet mode. So now I have auto, so if I wanna just click that, you know, climate control to be the set temperature that I always leave it at, then I could go, you know, lower and higher for fan speed. And if I decide I wanna like turn on defrost or put on my legs or something, I can do that. So that's gonna be the left side and I'll show you what that looks like. For the right side, we have the same thing. So right now you have display left, right, heads up display up and down, which is pretty good. It sucks because you do, it is nice having the display left and right. But I found out if you, if you customize it, you can do some really cool ones here. So how I always do it is, and again, to each their own, I like that I can customize to have sport mode on my steering wheel. Then you could have normal mode as the right. So again, you could just go and turn it to normal drive mode. The bottom one, I put it as stop start. Um, I just, I thought that maybe I would use that sometimes, but now I'm actually really used to the stop start system. So I don't know, maybe I would change that in the future. And then the left one I put to the camera view, which I think is really cool. So let me show you what those do now on the steering wheel. Okay, so now that we have the customization on, so let's just look at, so again, we still have on the left side, we still have the next track, the voice command, you know, the phone, that sort of thing. But now we've customized this page to be able to control like our fan speed. So we can crank up the fan speed. It shows us a little animation there. We can turn it down. We can just put it to auto which is always super easy, uh, where the car is gonna do all the thinking for us climate control wise. And if you override at fan speed, it kicks off the auto. And then we could also just change the outlet mode, which again would kick off the auto. So we can do face, you know, defrost, defrost the legs, etc. So that's a cool thing. If you, if you mess around with your climate control a lot, it's really cool to be able to have it on the steering wheel. Uh, over to the right side. So again, we still have those fixed buttons. And because of that, we still have Things like following distance and driving assist mode, those are fixed type buttons on there. Uh, but if we go to page two, now we have our new stuff. So we have a sport mode, which now will change all the gauge and you know the driving dynamic to be very sporty, make that gas touchy, that sort of thing. And we can go over to normal if we want, uh, which actually I wanted to see. If you double tap sport, it doesn't turn it on and off. So you need, you need the normal there. I have that start and stop. At the bottom, again, I'm used to that technology now, so I probably wouldn't do it. Uh, but what I would do is the panel view monitor. I think this is genius to have this on your steering wheel control because let's say you're in a driving situation where you're getting, 
you know, you're at a red light and someone's getting close to you and you want to see, just bam, hit that button. If you're in gear, it's going to give you bird's eye view on your big screen, which I think is really cool. So this is how I would customize my setup for the steering wheel controls. Uh, maybe I would change a few things as time goes on and tweak it a little bit, but I think it's really cool that you can customize it. Okay, so there you have it. There's some little bit of a deep dive in this system, how to customize it a little bit. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that it makes you be able to use the system a little bit more, enjoy it a little bit more, maybe customize it to what you want out of it. And I hope, I just hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching. I'm Dustin from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. Hopefully you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.